Welcome to this new episode of how I build this Bartop Arcade machine. In this second episode, I'll keep working on the cabinet, and I'll be programming the Raspberry Pi. In order to secure the power supply, I'm making a paper drilling template. Since I need to power three different devices, each one with its own voltage, I'm gonna use an ATX PC power supply. Now it's time to punch and drill the holes. In order to plug and ventilate the power supply, I'm gonna cut an opening on the side of the cabinet. I'm cutting it with a jigsaw. I'm refining the opening with a rasp and sandpaper. This opening is for the speaker's power amp. And again, I'm using the jigsaw, and I will use the rasp and some paper to refine it. And now it's time for the speaker's openings. I'm marking the openings with a compass. And again, jigsaw, rasp and some paper. I'm trying the speaker covers for fit. Now it's time to try everything for fit. What a surprise! The power supply is fitting right for the first try! Ok, everything's right. Now I'm gonna make the LCD brackets.
and this last cross piece it's intended to mount the LCD controller and the Raspberry Pi. I want the joystick and buttons panel removable, so I will hold it with some screws. Now it's time to set up the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible, with no programming. First I'm going to plug the micro SD to the computer. I'm going to install the RetroPi software. You can find the image on this page. I will leave the link on the description. I cancel the download because I have the image yet. In order to burn the image on the micro SD, I'll be using Win32 Disk Imager. Run the program, select the image, select the destination, which is the micro SD. Now I have to wait. I insert the micro USD on the Raspberry Pi. Now I connect the monitor to the HDMI plug. And now the micro USB power plug. It worked. That was that easy. Now it's time to add some ROM files. I'm going to use an FTP application. So first I need to find the DNS Raspberry Pi number. I will hook the Raspberry to the wireless router. And I'm powering it. And with this free Android application, I can see the Raspberry Pi DNS number. The application is called Fing. F-I-N-G. Now I'm gonna use another program called FileZilla. I open it Click on File and Sheet Manager. I create a new site called Pi. On Host, I'm gonna put the Raspberry Pi DNS number. On the Protocol tab, I choose SFTP. On Logo on Type, Normal. On User, I need to put Pi and Password Raspberry, which is the default one. Now the password again, Raspberry. And now I'm inside. Now I have to find the RetroPy folder and the ROMs one. Now I have to drag the folders inside. Each emulator has its own ROM folder.
Now I'm checking for the ROMs. Let's try Super NES. Yeah, it worked, but I can't hear the sound. Let's see MAME. Yeah, it works, but not the sound. I'm suspecting that the sound is by default directed to the HDMI output. So let's check it on the global settings. Aha, that was the problem. Now I'm directing it to the mini jack output. Now let's check it again, and yes, it's working right. Okay, the second part finished now. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up. Feel free to leave any comment. And remember, you can subscribe to my channel. This series will end with the third part, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you really soon.